About 200,000 years ago, perhaps the first war in human history began. Homo sapiens fought over territory and resources with Neanderthals, and this led to the gradual extermination of the latter. But the animals began feuding long before man picked up a stick, and believe me, their wars have always been just as brutal. Let's go! This is a real ant's fortress. Impregnable walls of leaves and guards everywhere. A large and very successful colony lives here. But the cooler the colony, the more powerful enemies it attracts. If you've seen The Hobbit, you remember what happened to the dwarves of Lonely Mountain. For everyone else, let me explain. When they accumulated too much gold, a dragon flew in, set everything on fire, and took the gold and the mountain. Dragon! Now can you see this spider? Not a dragon, of course, but it came for the same purpose. Ant gold. What they value most is the larva. Now look closely at the spider. Its body is suspiciously similar to that of an ant. Thanks to this, the spider simply sneaks into the most guarded place of the anthill and quietly steals the larva. What about the guards? Surprisingly, they don't understand what's going on. Um, uh, looks like uh, Steve's brother. Or his grandmother. Okay, let him go. Wait, the alarm? Yeah, let's pretend that's what it sounds like for ants. The colony seems to be in danger, and it's not even about a spider. This guard releases special pheromones that summon all the inhabitants of the anthill to war. To war! Yes, the most ancient war, which has lasted for more than a hundred million years. In fact, ants are very similar to humans. Think about it. Alone, an ant, like a man, has little chance to succeed. But united, they're capable of incredible things. Ants build large colonies, do their own farming, and just like humans, wage wars. So the guard signal alerted everyone about an attack by ants from another colony. There they are, crawling up the tree. Their colony isn't as prosperous, so they've come to rob and take over someone else's. But ant warfare isn't just about pawing the enemy and biting. The defenders of the fortress have special weapons, acid cannons. To humans, formic acid seems like some kind of funny sour liquid, but in the world of wildlife, it can save the life of an entire anthill. Or look, this huge ant belongs to the species Camponitus gigas, and it's considered one of the largest in the world. It can reach three centimeters in length, while the smaller ones are just regular weaver ants defending their stronghold. They have a special strategy to defeat such a giant. First, you have to immobilize it. See these guys? While they hold its paws and deprive it of resistance, the others quickly bite it and inject poison into the big ant's body. And here, neither the size nor the powerful jaws will help. The chemical weapon works. The giant is defeated. After that, the last invader dies. Today, they managed to defend the fortress, but at what cost? Hundreds, thousands of ants' lives. So yes, everything is in an ordinary war. And such battles happen all the time. As I said, ants have been at war for over a hundred million years. During this time, they've not only developed weapons, but also different professions. From night watchman to barrel of sweet water. Yes, that's an ant's job, to be a barrel. What a dream job. But we're interested in the other guys. Ah, there they are. Big head, powerful jaws. Only a soldier ant can boast such a set. Moreover, in the ant army, there are even ranks. For example, this one is a private. The bigger one is a sergeant. And the biggest one is a major. In some families, there are also super majors, which are giant creatures in terms of insects. In general, the larger the ant, the superior it is in rank. I'm not sure if they respect the chain of command, but who knows? Each species has its own unique weapon. Surely scientists don't even know about some of them yet, but what if the enemy overcomes all lines of defense, and acid cannons, and army ants with big jaws? To get an idea of what the options are, let's take a look at the attackers. Who the hell are these guys? Meet another species of army ants who are nomadic. To understand who they are, we need to travel back to the 13th century. That's when Mongol warriors, led by experienced warlords, were the real big problem of the time. Ever heard of Genghis Khan? Many believe that his warriors didn't even have their own homes. They simply seized, plundered, and destroyed everything in their path. In reality, of course, everything was a little more complicated, but let's omit this fact or you won't get a beautiful comparison. So these army ants also don't have a home. They don't build anthills, but regularly migrate from one place to another, devastating other ants' homes in the process. These are several species that share a love for constant travel and destroying everything in their path. 
Look here, they're eating a snake. And here's an unlucky scorpion. Big scissor-like jaws, plus numerical advantage, plus the acid that ants inject into their dinner. Anyone caught by the army ants along the way will be dissolved from the inside and eaten. The only way to avoid a horrible death is to remain completely still. These ants are almost blind and guided only by sound. Look at that. The grasshopper understands what's up. Otherwise, these ants can't be stopped by acid cannons or any other weapon. Probably human ones too, because, well, we can't shoot back at them, can we? So if nomads attack one colony, their nearest neighbors will know about it. Survival depends on it. When one anthill suffers defeat, the other is in full swing to evacuate everybody. They've spotted the army ants and are trying to save the ants' most precious possessions, the very ant gold that all the invaders want to steal. There's the saving of the larvae taking place. But there are also those who've learned to defend themselves in their own way. See that hatch? That's a gliding ant. This hatch is actually an ant itself. Most often they settle in a tree, taking cavities and cracks. The main feature of these ants is that they have a large concave army shield, which plays an important role in protecting the colony from the enemy. Some species also use it to glide if they accidentally fall from a great height. So when the same guard ant sounds the alarm, these guys cover all entrances and exits with their heads. The enemy just can't get in. And as strange as it sounds, a regular door is enough to protect them. The thick chitonous plate, like a cork closes the entrance well. Army ants waste no time in figuring out its construction. They simply move on and conquer some other anthill. And while we're on the subject of unusual ways of defending the anthill, here's a fact. Some of the species are even able to explode near the enemy. Literally. Here, see? This army ant sacrificed itself to save the colony. I don't think ants are capable of fear, of course, but... Well, now look at the other battlefields from above. Um... Why? You can't see anything. It's just a forest. But only 50 years ago, there was a bloody war between chimpanzees. If you've watched the other videos on my channel, you know that chimpanzees are not just harmless fruit eaters at all. They're cannibals who can not only hunt other primates, but also exterminate entire populations. By the way, close relatives of humans. You can tell, can't you? So this area of the forest was ruled by one large community of chimpanzees. But then an event happened that changed their lives forever. The clan split into two warring parties, one in the north and one in the south. For a full four years, these factions fought real battles. The skirmishes went far beyond the usual throwing of stones at the enemy. The apes used cunning tactics, trapping the enemies and preventing them from escaping. Moreover, having killed the enemies, the victors would divide them up and eat them right on the battlefield. Jeez. Over the years, all the males of one of the groups were killed. Their females went missing, and the cubs were forcibly brought to the victors. After the victors had completely cleared the other's territory, they took possession of it, just like humans. Of course, then another war broke out, and the clan had to retreat, but that's another story. We'll see you later.